चले ट्राई एंड डू ओनली ये ओल्ड क्वेश्चन कर लेते हैं ठीक है ओनली ऑर्गेनिक पास पेपर्स ठीक है जस्ट ओपनिंग बंच ऑफ पेपर्स एंड वील ट्राइंग टू जस्ट ऑर्गेनिक पास पेपर क्वेश्चन चलो स्टार्टिंग वाइज अब ये दिस इज ट्वेंटी दिस इज ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन ठीक है दिस इज फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन और एक से होल्ड करा ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन स्टार्टिंग विद क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी ठीक है ओनली ऑर्गेनिक क्वेश्चन तो और मैं एक्सप्लेन भी करता रहूंगा साथ साथ तो द क्वेश्चन इज विच रिजन विल गिव अ डिफरेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन विद कम्पेन्स पी एंड क्यू स्टार्टिंग विद पी एंड क्यू एंड आई आई ओपन द चार्ट एज वेल के नोट डिटेल वाली नहीं जस्ट रिविजन चार्ट ठीक है I said, so starting with this question. Now, this one is, uh, I mean, this thing over here is an aldehyde. Okay, this is an alcohol. So it's a, it's a, it's a primary alcohol. Okay, here, here, uh, this one over here is a primary alcohol. This is a secondary alcohol. This is an aldehyde. So alcohol plus, plus it's an aldehyde. While this one is a ketone. ठीक है, the middle part that's a that's a ketone, C double bond over in the middle, and you've got an alcohol and an alcohol over here, two alcohols, two primary alcohols. इस वाले में ना it's a it's a primary plus secondary. Four type of alcohols are there. So which agent will give you a different observation? ठीक है, so how how would you get different observations? Uh, तो कौन सा ऑप्शन ठीक होगा? different observations first thing warm with k2cr207 remember both uh, aldehydes and alcohols uh, they when you warm them with k2cr207 or with kmno4 and aldehydes as well they're going to get oxidized to carboxylic acids so both of them are going to get oxidized to uh, carboxylic acids so kmno4 and k2cr207 is going to give you the same result with alcohols as well as aldehydes a uh, silver nitrate in ammonia solution uh it's a silver nitrate with ammonia solution kaun sa rahega phir if it's not hot acidified kmno4 warm with acidified k2cr27 uh acha what is silver nitrate in ammonia solution ye kis cheez ka hota hai sir it tolens reagent hai ha theek hai that's a tolens reagent so that's ag with uh, nh two nh3 is combined to it टॉलेंस किसका टेस्ट होता है एल्डिहाइड के लिए सर ठीक है सो एल्डिहाइड ओनली एलियल्स दे गेट ऑक्सीडाइज्ड विद टॉलेंस ठीक है कीटोन्स डोंट अंडरगो एनी ऑक्सीडेशन व्हाटसोएवर सो एल्डिहाइड विल गेट आई मीन दिस वन विल गिव अ पॉजिटिव टेस्ट दिस वन विल नॉट गिव अ पॉजिटिव टेस्ट सो दैट्स द आंसर दैट्स टॉलेंस रिएजेंट फॉर दिस ठीक है एल्डिहाइड्स डू गेट ऑक्सीडाइज्ड विद टॉलेंस कीटोन्स डोंट अच्छा फिर और क्या है The cyclic compound M is heated with dilute uh, hydrochloric acid. What are the products of the reaction? I say throw us a prana. It's uh, amides are in A two right now. So, so but I'll I'll just explain. Okay, what's going to happen is that there's an ester group dilute acid. Okay, so the ester group breaks down. So what will happen is the ester group in the middle that's going to, I mean this ester link will break. And amide is, is no longer in your core, so that also breaks. By the way, so amides and esters are kind of the same thing. Always me padave. This turns into a carboxylic acid. This turns into an into an alcohol. Other bhi bhi hota hai. It turns into a carboxylic acid and it turns into H or OH. Wapas aa jata hai. Khair, anyways, we are focusing on esters right now. So the ester will break and. it will turn into an alcohol and a carboxylic acid so which is the correct option
किस इट्स मिडिल में सी एच टू है टू एच एस सर ए होगा सो ए और बी में से सो एंड इट्स गोइंग टू बी नहीं बी होगा एन एस टू है ना एक साइड पे यस सर ए है बी नहीं सॉरी सॉरी व्हाट्स द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ए एंड बी सर उसमें वो अमोनिया बन रहा है नहीं बी होगा होगा ये कि एन एज अ लोन पे राइट अमोनिया इज बेसिक सो इफ यू एड एन एसिड द एच प्लस वन इज गोइंग टू get attracted to the end you have never pada when a data bonding that when you have ammonia so or nh2 or anything it has lone pairs and h plus ions are going to get attracted to it theek hai clear as i guess question this question i'm, I'm just skipping this question theek hai uh, kyunki part of it was is not in your course anymore let's move to the next one ignore the last one theek hai i'm not i don't want to go into details with that As a cotton seed oil contains large compounds of polyunsaturated carboxylic acid, when this oil is used to make margarine, the serial bond C bonds in the unsaturated carbo carboxylic acids are hydrogenated. Which reagents and conditions would be suitable to bring hydrogenation? So it's simple hydrogenation. How do you how do how do you hydrogenate? Sir, A. Sir, A. Oga. Okay, that's A. Uh, hydrogen plus nickel catalyst. Which intermediate ion forms the greatest amount during the addition of HBr to propene? so propene is this thing and what's the mechanism that uh, hpr is going to get h is positive it's going to get attracted to the double bond and the electrons in the bromine are going to get repelled acha so where will the h get attached to right side or left side right side to say ठीक है तो रूल क्या मकोवनिकोव रूल दैट्स द एच गेट्स अटैच्ड टू द कार्बन दैट्स ऑलरेडी बॉन्डेड टू मोर एच एटम्स सो द एच विल गेट अटैच्ड टू द टू द राइट साइड एंड दिस इज व्हाट इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म के डबल बॉन्ड में ना द एच विल बॉन्ड टू द राइट साइड एंड दिस कार्बन विल बिकम पॉजिटिवली चार्ज्ड ठीक है द एच विल टेक अवे इलेक्ट्रॉन्स द कार्बन विल बिकम पॉजिटिवली चार्ज्ड The Markovnikov's rule is that the H always gets bonded to the carbon that's already bonded to more H atoms. ठीक है alkenes का ये. So which which one is the correct answer? B होगा सर. A. A. बीच में carbon atom is the middle, right? Yes, sir. ठीक है. ठीक है. Remember Markovnikov's rule: double bond. Uh, the H always gets bonded to the carbon that's already with more H atoms. I said this one. Corn is the major constituent of the poison. Acha, jo bhi can be synthesized by the reaction of ammonia with a dibromo compound. X. So ammonia with a halogenoalkane. Okay, what's what's going to happen? Ammonia with a halogenoalkane. So whenever you have, uh, whenever you have a halogenoalkane, what happens is that Uh, the halogen is going to be substitu substituted by ammonia theek hai that's what's going to happen so so that's what's going to happen in this case the bromine is going to be substituted by ammonia so this is the product that's getting formed so i'm going to do the reverse okay this is the reaction that's happening okay the bromine if you reacted with ammonia it will be substituted by by the amine the nh2 is going to take uh, take its place and hpr is going to be formed okay that's the overall reaction so i'm going to do the reverse i have the product already with me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, do the reverse ke wapas na remove the nh2 and replace it with br back again so that's what i'm going to do okay, i'm going to replace uh, the nh2 okay the nh2 is gone and i'm going to replace it with br okay so this was the position where you had the nh2 so i'm i'm doing the reverse now so this was the position where you had nh2 now i'm going to put br over there ab hoga ke reverse mein na you, you 
if you look over here in reverse mein, there are two brs being added one nh2 nh3 being removed and there are two brs being added that means or that suggests that one br is getting added over here and the other br is getting added over here but if you look at the equation there are two hprs getting formed so so the reaction was pretty simple ke halogen it gets substituted by nh2 tk lekin over here what you saw was that there was one nh3 and it was substituted substituting two brs so you got rid of the nh2 and brought the br back again is this clear sir repeat kar dena ek baar ye reaction hai na ki you had a br halogen alkanes they have they undergo nucleophilic substitution so well if i if i write a simple reaction okay this is the reaction that's happening okay there's nh2 and these are all h atoms and balki nh2 pehle nahi hai sorry so you had br and in the place of br you have nh2 coming in theek hai this is nucleophilic substitution all halogenoalkenes they react with ammonia and the halogen is going to get substituted by by the amine group to ye wala part clear hai is this clear that this is what's happening yes, the br yeah. so what he gave us was this thing he gave us the product i mean that's the product theek hai so we have the product so the question ye tha ke find out what the original molecule is so how do you find out the original molecule you get rid of the nh2 and uski jagah what do you do you put in the br back again right is that clear yes sir so that's what i'm going to do over here as well okay what i'm going to do is okay, i'm uh, i'm going to get rid of the the nh2 jo bhi nh hai theek hai i'm going to get rid of it and i'm going to bring i'm going to bring the br back again bas ek issue hai okay, i would have to bring two brs if i remove one nh like if i go back the only thing in the reaction is that the nh3 is replacing two brs so if i go back so if i get rid of the nh2 i have to bring in two brs in its position so the two brs will be probably attached over here clear i'm i'm doing exactly the same thing that's that i'm doing over here except for the fact that i'm okay jab main nh2 ko uta ke wapas if i if i go back i'm putting in two brs in that place because the equation is suggesting that there were two brs being displaced abhi clear yes sir yes. so what is the what is the name of this molecule now the do ga 15 bromo octane ठीक है कितना कार्बन दैट्स 1 2 3 4 5 अह देयर इज अ 6 7 8 कार्बन एटम्स इन अ लाइन ठीक है सो 8 कार्बन एटम्स इज ऑक्टेन एंड द बीआरस आर अटैच्ड एट पोजीशन नंबर 1 2 3 4 एंड 5 तो इनके ऊपर वो अटैच्ड है ठीक है ऐसे एक ये मुश्किल क्वेश्चन था ठीक है यू यू हैड टू फिगर दिस आउट के normally if you want to go back you will replace it with one br but in this case you had to replace it with two brs because one nh3 was substituting substituting two brs that's okay next part two bromo uh, propane two bromo propane propane is three carbon atoms and you have second pe you have a bromine two bromopropane and these are your h atoms and there's going to be 1h over here as so it's reacting with hot concentrated uh, noh in ethanol ethanolic noh what happens with ethanolic noh halogenoalkanes the halogenoalkane elimination theek hai it will turn hot noh uh, concentrated noh it will turn into an alkene so what's going to happen is that the br is going to be removed or uski jagah what you will get is you will get an alkene theek hai or neighboring atoms and an h is also removed 
anyways, Joe, jo, the position where you had a VR, you'll have an alkene. What is the major product of this reaction? You'll only have one product. Okay, if you put double bond on either side, it's going to be the same thing. So the answer is, okay, D A. You get clear? Yes, sir. I said next one, uh, the presence of halogen in an organic compound may be detected by warming the organic compound with silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is a test for CL ions, BR ions, and I minus one ions. With CL, it's going to be a white precipitate. With BR minus one, it's going to be a green precipitate, yellow precipitate with uh, I minus one. I said, who's going to produce the precipitate the quickest out of these four There's options? Or Kimogasi. ब्रोमीन वाला जो है Once again, as a bromine halogeno alkane would be less reactive. Uh, Cl halogeno alkane would be even less reactive. Cl bonds are very strong, so uh, it would be harder for it to react. I का जो bond है ना that breaks very easily, so that will produce the I minus one ion, and that will quickly react with the silver ions, and they will form a yellow precipitate of AgI. ठीक है तो याद रखना halogeno alkanes में the most reactive one. is the one with the uh, uh it's lower down in the group because the longer bond length they easy to easier to break so we have this reaction uh what type of they both alcohols what type of alcohol is this one say primary ye wala you get that's a you get that's a primary alcohol So this one is a primary alcohol. What is what is this? Serrated H D. Okay, the carbon that has the O H is bonded on all three sides with a carbon chain, so that's a tertiary alcohol. Um, different observation. What's which ones? Which one will get oxidized and which one will not get oxidized? Serrated H D will not oxidize. ठीक है टर्शी जो था दैट्स दे नॉट ऑक्सीडाइज्ड प्राइमरी अल्कोहल्स दे डू गेट ऑक्सीडाइज्ड दे टर्न इनटू काम प्राइमरी अल्कोहल्स दे टर्न इनटू एल्डिहाइड्स एंड देन दे फर्दर टर्न इनटू कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड्स अ तो K2Cr2 7 ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट राइट इट विल गिव यू डिफरेंट ऑब्जर्वेशंस होगी क्या व्हाट्स द ऑब्जर्वेशन विद K2Cr2 7 फॉर दिस वन सेड दे एल्डिहाइड बनेगा पे कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड हो जाएगा नहीं ऑब्जर्वेशन क्या व्हाट विल यू सी से पर्पल टू कलरलेस नहीं ऑरेंज टू ग्रीन है केमिनो फोर इज पर्पल टू कलरलेस ठीक है आई सेड नेक्स्ट वन द द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज दैट देयर इज दिस स्ट्रक्चर देयर इज दिस मॉलिक्यूल इट्स अ थ्री डाइमेंशनल मॉलिक्यूल ठीक है इट्स लाइक अ इट्स लाइक अ प्रिज्म आई थिंक अ नी प्रिज्म ऐसा नहीं होता मॉलिक्यूल Can you pin out there would be two CLs? I said now, how many structures could you have? First thing is the two CLs could be right next to each other. So you could have instead of the H over here, you could have uh, a CL over here, and over here as well you could have a CL. So that is that is one isomer that the CLs could be right uh, next to each other. I said, would it be the same thing if the seals are over here or over here? Is it going to be the same thing or a different thing? Sir, same will be. Same yoga. Okay, if the seal is over here, it's going to be the exact same thing. Okay, well, I mean, if it's got top view, they're going to the top view is like this. 
So if the CLs are like next to each other, that's the same thing. Even if the CLs are like over here, that's still the same thing. It's just uh, a rotated view. So, so that means that you put two CLs anywhere at the top position, it would pretty much mean the exact same thing. So that's one. Okay, so we we've made one isomer. You clear that okay? Your top pen of CLs, those CLs, can you be like Galo? It's going to be exactly the same thing. Yes. I said. Then uh, what can you have? What can you do is uh, uh, the face over here. I mean, all faces are the same. Okay, it's like I mean, I mean this face, the one that's facing you, uh, is the same as the face that you have on the left side. It's just facing some other side. But that's kind of the same face, TK. And this side is also exactly the... This face is exactly the same as well. So now on this face, how many different uh, ways can you put a CL? You can put a CL uh, over here. TK, one at the top, one at the bottom, right? Uh, so that's one. And it doesn't really matter. If you put the CLs uh, vertically over here as well, that's going to be exactly the same thing. So that's your second one, right? Then you could have the CLs um, on the bottom side. Right? The CLs could be right next to each other. Now, this side and this side are exactly the same thing. It doesn't really matter. Okay, You put it over here or you put it over here, it's exactly the same thing. Like if you rotate it around, it's it's going to look exactly the same. So, so that's your third one. So, so CLs over here on this side, CLs on this side, that's the same thing. CLs on the bottom side, on the top side, that's the same thing. The CLs could be diagonal to each other. You could have a CL over here and you could have a CL. So that's your that's your fourth one. That's your that's your fourth one. Um, so we've found four isomers so far. This diagonal would be exactly the same. So this so there's no point putting it over there. Is there any other way in which an isomer could be formed? Sir, upperni lagenge straight line ke under CH or CH ke saath. Ye piche wale pe, yahan pe. Yes, sir, one above and one below. So, if you put a seal over here and you put a seal over here, this is what you're talking about, right? Yes, sir. No, but I'm saying that that's the same thing as uh, putting a seal over here and a seal over here. If you rotate this axis, pe rotate karo na, it's, it's, you put the seal on the back side. So, if you rotate it Thank on you. this, so that would mean exactly the same thing. Okay. So, so I don't think there's any other way you could uh, put. I'm just going to repeat. Okay. Uh, put these. Put two CLs on this triangle over here, either over here or over here or over here. It's the same thing. So that's one. Uh, put CLs um, on this side or on this side or on the back side. It would mean exactly the same thing. So that's your second. Put CLs at the bottom. Either you put it on the bottom or you put it on the top. It's the same thing. So that's your third one. And diagonal, put two seals uh, across the face. Uh, that would be another one. So that's four structural isomers. It's a check kind of isomers. It's, it's harder to actually get these ones right. But pretty sure structurally, there are four. Let me just double check this. Yes, sir. So which question 28? That's it. Oh, only three, sir. Need 28, what's 28? He's saying it's A. A is C. So how many would this compare with the same scale formula? Why why is it three? 
So maybe the two on the top side and two on the bottom side, if you just flip it upside down, it's going to become the same thing. No, that's, that's, I counted as one. I mean, one was that you put two seals anywhere on this triangle, it would mean the same thing. That was one. Uh, then I said that you put two seals on either one of these vertical sides, that would mean exactly the same. That was your second one. And then I had, um, two seals. I see the top one, Tiga, I got it. That was this one. I said okay, two seals on this side. We already did that. We covered it on the on the first one. That was wrong. Two seals on the on the bottom or on the top. That was already covered on the triangle thing. So that one was incorrect. Because when I said that the triangle, if you put two seals anywhere on the triangle, that covered the front face as well. You could put two seals on the front as well. That would mean exactly the same thing. So so we did one extra. That was incorrect. So I'll just repeat this quickly. CLs anywhere on the triangle, that's two CLs. That's one. CL on the vertical side, anywhere on the vertical side, that's that's the same thing. So that's two. And diagonal CLs, that's the third one. The top one is already covered in the triangle. Is that clear? Yes. So this one is C. As I say, next one. I say, I have this molecule. What is the mole ratio of carbon dioxide to water produced when limonene is completely burned in oxygen? Uh, mole ratio to, so basically I need to find out uh, how many carbons I've got. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So I have 10 carbons. So how many carbon dioxides would be produced? 10 carbon dioxides. I don't need to write the whole equation there will be 10 carbon dioxides that are going to be produced. How many water molecules, how many hydrogens do I have? This is two hydrogens, this is three, so that's five. Then six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I've got 16 hydrogens. So that means I will have eight water molecules in my reaction. Um, so number of moles of carbon dioxide, number of moles of, uh, and he's talking about the ratio, mole ratio. So that's uh, five ratio four, that's P. TK, is this clear? Yes. Did you uh, simplify, is it? Yes, yeah, simplest ratio. He's asking for the mole ratio. Uh, I mean, ratio is always the simple, you're talking about the simplest ratio. I said, next one, you've got a, uh, I said, amides are not in your course anymore. I said, we've got this organic molecule. Um, what are the bond angles? What is X? So 120 degree. Tiga, that's 120 degrees. Uh, does it have two pi bonds? So single pi bond, Ogan. Tiga, there's only one double bond, so that's one pi bond, so not two pi bonds. The molecule has three lone pairs of electrons. Uh, how many lone pairs will oxygen have? It's in group six. If it's in group six, it's got six valence electrons. If it's making a double bond, that means it's sharing two electrons out of those six. So you're left with how many? Four electrons. Carbon is in group four and it's making, it's got four valence electrons and it's making four bonds. So all the electrons are used up. Nitrogen is in group five, five valence electrons. It's making three bonds. So out of five, three are being bonded. So the two electrons that are left. And this one will also have two electrons. So Kitne, how many lone pairs do you have? You've got uh, four lone pairs. So the last statement is also incorrect. Okay, clear? Yes, sir. So then you have um, just organic. Which statement about this molecule is it's an alkene? So all the carbon atoms are in the same plane. Is that true? No, you said it. Okay. 
these carbon atoms are in the same plane, these ones. Uh, because double bond, it's plane, it's fan shaped. This one is also plane of fan shaped. Uh, okay, let me highlight the carbon atoms that are in the same plane. So, yes, that's that's in the same plane. Okay, they're they're two, um, so all the carbon atoms are in the same plane. No, they're not. So these carbon atoms are in this are in the same plane because around the double bond, the shape is fan shaped. It's trigonal planar. This one is also trigonal planar. It's going to be tetrahedral. This carbon atom will be will have this shape. It's going to be some bonds will be coming out of the page, some will be going into the page. So after this, the carbon atoms are no longer going to be in the same plane. And uh, so, which is why this one. These carbon atoms are tetrahedral. They're not in the same plane. Uh, will it have geometrical isomers? Yes, sir. So geometrical isomer, you need a double bond. You have a double bond and you need two sides which are different. This, These two sides are different. These two sides are different. So Hoga, is it optically active? Yes, sir. Right, sir. Second one, sir. Okay, so it is optically active as well. This carbon has four different groups, so it will form two non-superimposable mirror images. So now I've, I've got this molecule. Organic compound X will react with calcium metal to produce a salt with the empirical formula C4H4O4. So what could be the identity of X? First one, ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid is CH3, double bond OOH, and 3Hs. So when it reacts with calcium metal, how is the salt produced? Uh, the H is lost, it becomes minus one, and calcium is plus two. So according to, so that's how the salt is produced. The acid loses the H positive ion. So according to Chris Cross, how many ethanoid ions will it have? It's going to have two of them, right? Charges brabber on it. There's going to be two of these, right? Is this clear? Yes, sir. The answer to okay, okay, is this is this C A C four H four O four. It's H six. So there are four carbons, right? I mean, there are four carbons, but there are six H's. Like one one ion has three H's, and there are two of them, so there's oh, there's six yes. six H's. So that's not going to work. I said so. So one is wrong. What is butane dioic acid? Butane dioic acid is four carbon atoms. Dioic means that it's got two carboxylic acids. So there's a carboxylic acid here, and there's a carboxylic acid on the on the other side as well. Same thing will happen when calcium reacts. The it will lose its H plus one ions minus one. This H would also be lost minus one, and calcium is plus two. So the charges are already balanced. Uh, this is, and there are H's in the middle. These are H atoms. As I, so the charges are already balanced. This is overall minus two, this is plus two. So that's your salt. So is this is this correct? Yes, sir. Okay, you see? So uh, C4H4O4 and C, okay, that's fine. So then you have two methyl uh, propane dioic acid. What is propane? Prop is three carbon atoms. Prop. Propane dioic acid is uh, again dioic acid. That's two carboxylic acids, and it's got a it's got a methyl on the second one. So there's a carbon single carbon on the second one. TK, there would be three H's with this one, one H with this one. Again, when calcium reacts, it's going to form a salt. Uh, this will become minus one. This will also react, will become minus one. And uh, calcium will be plus two. So the charges are already balanced. So you don't have to do anything. So Abhita, what's... Is this right? Formula seems right, sir. Four carbons, four hydrogens, four oxygen. 
I think that's that's also C A H four. C four H four O four. I have next part, you know, that's uh, which compound will react with the HPR to give a, give the compound R. So with the HPR, TK with the HPR, who's going to react with the HPR? The uh, first one, alkenes. Uh, will it give you compound R? Let's say three to start. Let's say what's the Makovnikov's rule when HPR gets added? On which side will the H get added? This side or the bottom side? The right side, sir. The one without any carbons. No, the rule is that the H gets bonded to the carbon that's already bonded to more H atoms. Yeah, there are two H the atoms. Right, right. Achha, so the H is going to get bonded to the uh, carbon that's already bonded to. So the H goes over here and the BR goes over here and the double bond turns into a single bond. So you're going to get this thing. TK, this is CH3. Uh, what will happen over here? Okay, where will the... I think you'll get the same thing, right? The BR will get added to this carbon atom. And this one already has more Hs, so the H will get bonded to this one. So And the double bond is going to finish in the middle. So... So you're going to get the same thing. It's the BR getting bonded to the same position over here as well. TK clear? Or uh, finally, alcohols. TK, do alcohols uh, react with uh, HPR? Alcohols, what's the reaction? I mean, alcohols do react with HPR. TK, there's HPR written. Alcohols will turn into halogenoalkanes. TK, they are going to react with I said alcohols will react with HBR and they'll turn into a halogen alkane. So uh, the OH is going to be substituted by substituted by BR and you'll get the same thing. So all three options are correct. TK clear? Yes. This one, let me eat. Here's your ester again. Which statement about this reaction is correct? He's saying that 5 hydroxy pentanoic acid. The pentanoic acid is uh, 5 carbon atoms. Pentanoic acid is. As a pentanoic acid is double bond O and uh, OH. And you've got five hydroxy. So on the fifth one, there is OH. There is OH on the fifth one. What is being produced? What's being produced is uh, the product that you have is this thing. That's your product. And that's an ester. Double bond O and O, that's an ester. So how did the ester get formed? The ends probably reacted with each other. Ends and the alcohol reacted with the carboxylic acid, so they ended up forming a cyclic compound. Okay, so that's what, what's happening. The five carbon atoms, they got folded. So that those are your five carbon atoms. And they got together and they connected together at, at the end and they formed an ester link. Okay, which statement was this, about this reaction are correct? A water molecule is produced in the reaction. Esterification and what happens? A water molecule is produced or not? Yes, it is. Tio Hamesha, the H is lost and the and the OH is also lost. And they join up. The so water is produced. Sulfuric acid is your catalyst in this reaction, esterification. Uh, the oxidizing agent has no role. Nothing whatsoever. TK, that's got nothing to do with it. Take it clear? Yes. I said, I'm going to do this organic. We'll uh, do the theory same here. Take We'll do some theory questions now. So here's um, summer 15 question paper 2 2. Take That's uh, question number four. 
there are seven structural isomers with the molecular formula C5H10O that are carbonyl compounds. As a first thing, they are carbonyl compounds. Carbonyl is what? Uh, carbonyl is. It's going to be As a carbonyl is allied in ketones, right? So that's. I said these four. I said four of these are aliates. So he's not talking about ketones at the moment. I think he's he just wants to deal with aliates. He says these four aliates A, B, C, and D have the following properties. Aliate A has a straight chain, while B and C and D are branched. So A colors. A is a straight chain. So that's five carbon atoms. And it's an aldehyde. You get double bond O is going to be right at the end. So it's an it's an aldehyde. Or Baki Beachmana, you can uh, you can add uh, H's. So as a paper may write down the H atoms. Here I'm just not wasting time writing H atoms. Do I have 10 H's? That's uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So that's the first one. As I, let's focus on B. B, C, and D are all branched, so they're not they're not straight chain. They're branched. Now, aldehyde B is the only one of the four isomers with a chiral center, and it exists as a pair of optical isomers. So, B is branched; it's an aldehyde, and it has to be chiral as well. So, for chirality, all four groups they they must be a chiral carbon atom. So, all four groups must be different. Now, how can I make all four of the, so I need a chiral carbon atom over here. So first thing I've got, I've got an H. Uh, I can turn one of them into an aldehyde because it was supposed to be an aldehyde. Now I'm left with three carbon atoms. So I can have one carbon atom over here and I can have two carbon atoms on that side. And these are my H atoms, write down the H atoms. So that makes it, that makes it chiral. Okay, so it was supposed to be an aldehyde and it was supposed to exist as a pair of optical isomers, it will. All four sides are different and it is chiral. You be clear? Yes. Acha, so next one. C has two methyl groups in its structure, but D has three. So again, uh, so C has two methyl groups. So three, CH3. As a, and you've got, as a C has uh, two methyl groups, And D has three methyl groups. So, so I need to make uh, D and uh, C5, right? So that's the fifth one. That's going to be an aldehyde. I say, how big are It's going to be um, H, uh, and then you have the fourth carbon atom. That's going to have two H's, and then you have an aldehyde. Okay, so, so I've drawn all three of them. Methyl groups, methyl groups, uh, this one has three methyl groups. Is this clear? I just followed the instruction. Is this clear? Yes. Yes, sir. I said next well, can I can draw the two optical isomers of this thing. So I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to draw one. Make sure you know how to draw this. Uh, so I'm just going to draw it over here. Okay, there's going to be a carbon atom dot retrohedral arrangement. And read this carefully, draw the three dimensional structure TK. So this one, one side has CS2, CS3. Uh, it's got an H, it's got a CS3 on one side and it's got uh, an allied group on the other. Now, when you draw the mirrored version, it's going to be exactly mirrored. 
So the dotted line is going to be over here. Uh, the H is still coming out of the page. Now the CH2, CH3 will be on the right side now. The H is still there. The CH3 is still at its position. The CHO is on the other side. Okay, so those are your two mirrored versions. Then he says, describe a chemical test that would distinguish you to, uh, that would allow you to distinguish between any of the four isomers A to, A to D and any of the other three structural isomers of C5H10O that are carbonyl compounds. The other ones are ketones. So how would you distinguish the aldehydes that you have drawn from the ketones? There are two tests. What are those two tests? Yeah, difference are aldehydes and ketones. Sorry, ketones one oxidizer. Aldehydes two oxidizers. And the same that was just so the, so that's pretty much it. Um, that aldehydes will get oxidized, so you can add uh, tollens or felling. I mean, these are your tests. Compare. So you can add you can add tollens which will give you black press plate or silver mirror. Felling, that will give you brick red press plate. You can add K2Cr27, that's orange to green. The aldehyde will get oxidized and the ketones are not going to get oxidized. That's that's the main test. And if you want to test for carbonyl compounds, if you want to test whether they are aldehydes and ketones, uh, both you add two for DNPH. That's your test for. It will give an orange press plate with both of them. That confirms that it's a carbonyl compound and these tests, they confirm that it's an, it's an aldehyde. I said, next one. Describe a test that would give the same result with all seven, that, that's 240 NPH. So over here, he's asking for 240 NPH. Aldehyde and ketones both. And you'll get an orange precipitate. It's, uh, for aldehydes, you, you're going to use, uh, you can use tollens. And that will give you a silver mirror. TK, clear? So for tollens, is it okay if uh, I write a black precipitate? So is that fine? Instead of black press, it's more, it's important that you always write silver mirror. Sometimes uh, in the marketing scheme, the black press plate is not written. Silver mirror is always written. Although both are okay. right. But I think it's, if you just go by the book, it's silver mirror is more important. So previous one, this is again, uh, I said, there's this reaction, ethane with chlorine. Uh, what type of reaction is this? An alkane getting sub a free radical substitution. Okay, this one is free radical substitution, and for this, uh, the conditions that are needed are ultraviolet light. Okay, that's what's needed. Uh, okay, in Thalpi change, we'll do that later. Use a series of equations to describe the mechanism of this reaction, including the names of each stage. So it's a five mark question. You have to describe the whole mechanism. So what is going to happen in the first? stage, which is initiation. Here we go. What happens in it? In free radical substitution. The first stage is that the chlorine bond homolytically breaks due to ultraviolet light. It turns into two Cl atoms or two Cl radicals. That's the first stage. So you've got a Cl2 molecule and due to UV light, you'll get two Cl radicals, which are very, very reactive. So you get very reactive Cl radicals. And once you get those very reactive Cl uh, radicals, uh, then you have the propagation step. Those are three stages they count. Include the include the names of each stage and indication of how butane can be produced as a minor byproduct. Now you had ethane, right, which is C two H six. 
the CL radical is very reactive because it's short of a bond. So it's going to, what it's going to do is, a CL radical, it's going to go and steal one of the H atoms and it will form HCl. And that will leave you with C2H5, which is going to be a radical because it, it is short of one bond. There's one bond that's missing. As if in next stage, propagation has two steps. Then the C2H5 is short of a bond. It goes and steals one of the CLs and bonds with it. So it becomes C2H5Cl. So one of the CL has already substituted and a CL radical gets produced back again. And the same thing will repeat over and over again. The CL radical will go again, steal one of the hydrogens, form HCl. The carbon will be short of a bond. There would be one bond missing. And that carbon would then steal one of the CLs from chlorine molecule. It will become a chloroalkane and another CL radical will get produced. And then you have the termination stage, which is okay, what happens in termination that any of the radicals could just combine together. So in this case, he was very specific about the formation of butane. So this carbon is short of a bond. This carbon has a missing bond as well. So what can happen is that two C2H5 radicals can simply join up because they need one bond and they could just join together to form uh, C4H10, which is butane. So that I think kind of covers all the stages. Or it could be any other termination step as well, that the C2H5 radical, which needs a bond, can react with a Cl radical and the two can simply join up and they could form C2H5Cl. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat this once more. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, notes. Okay. What happens in free radical substitution is that it happens with alkanes or with any alkyl chain, any carbon chain, it's, the reaction is going to happen. The chlorine breaks down, forms uh, chlorine atoms, radicals due, due to ultraviolet light. And those chlorine radicals, they attack the carbon uh, halogenoalkane, sorry, the, the alkane molecule. And they start stealing H atoms from it. They start forming HCl. And the carbon becomes, has one bond missing. That carbon goes and then steals chlorine atoms from the chlorine molecule. It completes its bonds and Cl radicals get produced back again. And this process repeats over and over again. The chlorine radicals keep on coming in. They keep on stealing the H atoms. The carbon then goes and steals the Cl atoms from the Cl2 molecule and, and substitution keeps on happening. And in the termination step, any of the radicals that are produced previously, they can just join up with each other because they both need bonds to, to complete their bonds and they can just simply link up with each other. And that would be your termination step, TK. Clear here? Yes, yes, sir. So, Aglavala, okay, how do you go from a halogenoalkane to an alkane? Uh, by a two-step process. So Yapara, you need the help from the chart. How do you go from a halogen or alkene back to an alkene? So I have this halogen or alkene over here. There's no direct route. You can't go from a halogen or alkene to an alkene. That's not going to happen. So who calls a router? To alkenes, from alkenes to alkenes, sir. So you, you're going to first do elimination. You, you'll turn it into an alkene, ethanolic in which. And from an alkene, you will hydrogenate it and it will turn back into an alkene. That's the only possible path that you have, a two-step process. So that is what's going to happen over here. So this will be a two-carbon atom. I mean, this was C2H5Cl. Elimination will happen first. The H will be lost and it will turn into an alkene. So that's ethene. Uh, reagent and condition for reaction one, that's ethanolic NOH. TK, we just saw that. Cool. 
कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड प्लस हीट ठीक है कंडीशन भी मांगी हुई है वॉट इज कंडीशन दैट्स हाइड्रोजनेशन दैट्स निकल प्लस वन फिफ्टी और टू हंड्रेड डिग्री से निकेट यू विल हाइड्रोजनेट इट एंड इट विल टर्न इन टू एन आलकी Uh, तो ये कंडीशन होगी ठीक है सो वी डन विद क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री तो बाकी फिर ऑर्गेनिक ठीक है ऑर्गेनिक क्वेश्चन जस्ट रिमेम्बर ठीक है फिर से वो इन नोट में वन थिंग इज यू नीड टू नो दोल द होल माइंड मैप ठीक है कि वॉट हैपन्स हाउ डू गो फ्रॉम वन पोजिशन टू दर अदर पोजिशन एंड रिमेम्बर द मेकेजम बाय हार्ट ठीक है रिमेम्बर हाउ they just four mechanisms try and memorize them theek hai so we will do more questions tomorrow then theek hai koi question specific to nahi hai koi kisi ka sir sir are there any mass spectroscopy questions sir acha ha mass spectroscopy that's uh... I mean, they, in in AS, you you probably won't find any mass spectroscopy questions. You'll find them in A two, because AS they, they they just got added this year, right? So, so specific to mass. They're not in AS, sir. No, it's it's in AS now. Oh. So you won't find any mass spectros. I mean, there's there's one in the latest one, like in the October November twenty twenty two one. Uh. But that's about it. As I said, I'll, I'll just show you what uh, what mass spectroscopy. Quiz. I mean, this is these are A two worksheets. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll just show you mass spectroscopy is pretty simple. Okay. Uh, what you have in your course is this thing. Okay. Do you know, do you understand what the mm plus one peak is? No, sir. No, sir. So let me explain to you. Mass spectroscopy is that you have a molecule, uh, and let me. Even tell you what that molecule is. Uh, what is the alcohol? That is seventy-four C four. You are in table. Me check it. No, we are checking it. Like C four H nine O H. What is that? Is that seventy-four? तो यहां पे फॉरगेट दिस आई हैव ओपन यस सर यस सर 74 सर ठीक है दैट्स 74 सो एक सेकंड मैं यहां पे एक्सप्लेन कर रहा था फर्स्ट थिंग एमएम प्लस 1 इट्स अ इट्स अ मास स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इज लाइक रियली स्मॉल इट्स रियली टाइनी ठीक है अह इट्स जस्ट अ सिंपल फार्मूला एंड लेट मी एक्सप्लेन इट हियर ओके आई हैव अ सीएच4 मॉलिक्यूल अ मास स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इज दिस थिंग दैट let's have a ch4 molecule it has a certain mass what they do is that they bombard it with electrons and they ionize it so the molecule turns into an ion that's known as a molecular ion electrons get knocked out okay is that is that clear yes and during this bombardment with electrons the molecule this is known as a molecular ion Now, during this bombardment, the molecule could also break down into fragments. Maybe the CH two breaks down. Maybe the carbon sort of breaks out of the molecule. Maybe the H atom breaks out. Okay. Maybe the CH four loses an H, and you are left with three Hs, right? So these are your fragments. So so the molecule could break down into a number of small pieces, and those are your fragments. Is that clear? Yes. अच्छा होगा क्या कि दिल दिल create a beam of these particles so there's a molecular molecular ion that's that's traveling along with its tiny small pieces small lighter fragments right and they pass it through a magnetic field what happens when charged particles travel through a magnetic field they they get deflected sir they get deflected so this beam of particles is going to get deflected and this deflection is inversely proportional to mass heavy ones are going to be deflected less lighter ones are going to be deflected more is that clear yes so ab ho gaye so who's the heaviest one over here 
the fragments or the molecular ions? The molecular ions, sir. Okay, so the molecular ion is the heaviest one, right? So that's going to be the least deflected. So that's your CH4 plus one, right? But it's actually going to have two deflections. And I'm, I'm going to tell you why. And then you'll have lots of tiny fragments. Uh, these would be your fragments, the smaller pieces. Because they're lighter, they will have more deflections, right? Uh, they'll be deflected by a much wider angle. Okay, so, so this is what's happening. Uh, now, the question is, and this is how you find out the mass of atoms and mass of molecules, the MR, and all of this, isotopic masses, all of it is found out by figuring out the deflections. Like you find out what the deflection is, then you, then you can translate it into mass. That if it's getting deflected this much, it's probably going to have this much mass. Is that clear? Yes. I said, now what's going to happen? What is the mass of CH4, by the way? According to the priority table, what is, priority table, what is the mass of CH4? Mass of CH4. Well, the carbon 12 over there and H is 1, 16. so that's 16. 16. Okay. So that is 16. So what is this other CH4? Why is there another CH4? There's another CH4, which is 17. This one. And I'm going to tell you why. Why is the mass changing? Because remember, carbon has two isotopes. Carbon has an isotope of 12 and carbon also has another isotope, which is 13. There is 98.9% chances of getting carbon 12 and there is just 1.1% chance of getting carbon 13. Is that clear? Yes. So when you mass calculate, okay, the molecule is either going to have a mass of 16 or it's either going to have a mass of 17 because of the of carbon's other isotope. Is that clear? Okay. Yes. So, so you're not detecting one CH4. You're actually detecting two types of CH4. One is the heavier one. The other one is the is the lighter one. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And this one, you call it M-peak, and this is known as the M, I mean, M stands for molecular ion peak. Uh, they have a difference of one. Both of them are molecular ions. Uh, so this is the M-peak, and that's your M plus one. Do you get it? makes sense, right? Okay. I have a notation use of theater. That you don't use 16 or 70. You just call it an M-peak, and you call it the other one, the heavier one, you call it the M plus one peak. Now, what are the chances of getting M plus one? And what are the chances of getting M? I mean, what's the chance of getting 16? It's the same chance that you're going to get 16 when you get carbon 12, right? Mm -hmm. So that means 99% of all your detections will be what? The 16 one, right? The M peak, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And approximately 1% chance is... I mean, one person is the chance that you're going to get uh, the other one, right? So, so what you'll have is this thing. Let me explain it to you. What you'll have is, so what you're going to have is this thing. Okay? Your detector will show something being detected at 16, which is the M peak, and your detector will show something that's getting detected at 17. And it's going to have the uh, height, that's percentage abundance or the probability or the number of particles that it's detecting. So it's going to detect something at 16 and something at 17. That's how your output is going to be. And the ratio will be 99 ratio, one approximately. I mean, to be exact, it's 98.9 versus 1.1, right? Like uh, rough 99 ratio one. So that's your... This axis is your mass to charge ratio. That's basically mass. The height is your abundance or the percentage abundance. So that's how your detector will show the output. So, are we clear? Okay, what's happening? Yes, sir. Okay, so, so, this MM plus one gives you a lot of information about, uh, about a molecule. Whenever you do mass spectroscopy, so I'm going to do another mass spectroscopy now. And this time the molecule is C286. It's ethane. So I'm going to do the same thing. Same thing going to happen. What's going to happen that it will turn into an ion. And at the same time, it will turn into a lot of fragments as well, like C2H5 plus one, maybe a CH3 plus one fragment breaks off, maybe a carbon breaks off, maybe a CH2. So lots of fragments, right? 
but i'm interested in the in the molecular ion right now the heaviest one i said they're going to pass through the uh, magnetic field and they're going to get deflected now tell me c2h6 just c2h6 forget the fragments how many deflections will will c2h6 have or how many different masses will c2h6 have So like carbon has two isotopes and then hydrogen also has three. Yeah, uh, nee, we don't care about the other isotopes because uh, like if I, if I just one second, the other elements have isotopes which are very rare. Like if you look at hydrogen isotopes, uh, not the Wikipedia. So I don't care about the hydrogen isotopes because because almost 100% of the hydrogen that you have, that's hydrogen one. So, I mean, this is negligible. Like, you're, you're never going to detect, detect the this other isotope, which is deuterium. So, is that clear? That why are we in, why are we why are we, why are we interested in the hydrogen isotope? Sorry, in the carbon isotope, not in the hydrogen isotope. Is that clear? So, hmm. yes. atom ka isotope matter nahi karte. Issue ye ke some of the isotopes are so rare that you're hardly ever going to detect them. Your detector is never going to notice them. So. Hmm. So, so we don't care about the hydrogen isotopes. Tell me the masses. So, hydrogen. Assume hydrogen is one. Carbon could be twelve, or carbon could be thirteen. So, how many different masses will you have? Is it, is it two? The either it's going to be three. Either both the carbons are twelve. So, if both the carbons are twelve, Ooh. and the hydrogens are one, so that's six. So, what do you get? You get uh, that's thirty, right? So you get, you're going to reject a particle that has a mass of 30. And if one of the carbons is 13, one of the carbon is 12, and there are six hydrogens, so that will give you a mass of what, 31? And then you have another one, which is both of the carbons could be 13. And there are six hydrogens, so you're going to get 32. So basically, you're getting three molecular ions now. You're getting an M. You're going, to, you're going to get an M plus one, that's a difference of one, and you're going to get an M plus two as well. Is that clear? So now you're getting three peaks. Mm -hmm. yes. Amazon, what is the probability of getting the M peak? Remember carbon 12 has a chance, has, has a 99% probability, 98.9% probability. So what are the chances of getting both of the carbons as 12. Probability make or the, the probabilities multiply when you it's the carbon 12 and carbon 12, right? So mm -hmm. it's 98.9 percent times 98.9 percent. And what you're going to get is you're going to get 98 percent. This will calculate by color. It's, it's probably going to come out to be 98%. Like it's going to come out to be 0.98 something. And uh, percentage, it's, percentage, it's, percentage, uh -huh, percentage it's going to be 98% if you multiply it by 100. Say, what if you get one of them as 13? So now you have 98% uh, chances of getting carbon 12 over 100. And carbon 13 ke catch chances are that's 1.1 percent over 100, right? I said so, and there would be two scenarios for this. Into two can now go, okay? It could be the other way around as well. The first one could be 13, and the second one could be 12. So basically, there are two events that will give you m plus one. So is ka batao ke? I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, this will come out to be around two percent. Like you can do this, it, it will probably come out to be 0 0.02. And uh, the last one, what is the probability of getting both of them as 13? That's 1.1 1 .1 over 30, over 100 times 1.1 1 .1 over 100. And this comes out to be a very low probability of approximately 0%. Okay, you mean rough estimates. So the, you clear how I calculated the probabilities. 
اچھا اب اس پوری چیز کا نا جو بھی میں نے سمجھایا نا اس کا کچھ کرنا ہے نہیں ویسے ٹھیک ہے جسٹ گوئنگ ان ٹو ڈیٹیلس ود ود دا ایکسپلینیشن اور دا اسٹوری بیہائنڈ ایٹ ٹھیک ہے آل یو ہیو ٹو ڈو از یو ہیو ٹو یوز اے سمپل فارمولا دیٹس ایٹ اچھا سی واٹس ہیپننگ وین یو ہیڈ ون کاربن واٹ واز دا ریشو آف دا ایم این ایم پلس ون ایٹ واز نائنٹی نائن ریشو ون رائٹ از دیٹ کلیئر ناؤ وین یو ہیڈ ٹو کاربنس What was your M M plus one ratio now? That was 98 ratio. That was mm-hmm. 98. So instead of 99 ratio one, it's now 98 ratio two. Now imagine if you have a molecule that's got three carbon atoms. So what is the probability of getting the M peak? What's the probability of getting all three of them as 12? That's 98.9% into 98.9% into 98.9%. That's going to give you 97%. So do you notice a trend what's happening that... Uh, just as the number of carbon atoms are increasing right in a molecule the height of the m peak or the ratio of the height uh, ratio is decreasing from 99 ratio 1 it went to 98 ratio 2 if you've got three carbon atoms it's going to go down to 97 ratio 3 is that clear yes yes so so the ab ye basically aapko isse ye pata karna hai is piche wala sa ignore karo theek hai all you have to know is that if you know the mm plus 1 ratio of the heights whether it's 99 ratio 1 98 ratio 2 or 97 you can figure out the number of carbon atoms using that ratio you will figure out how many how many carbons the molecule has theek hai is that clear mm-hmm. yes sir and you're going to use a simple formula which is 100 over 1.1 into uh, m plus 1 over m like if you know the if you know the ratio you just plug it in this formula and you'll get your number of carbon atoms that's it so all you have to do is you have to just remember this formula that's about it ye abhi main khali is baat pe mm plus 1 ke upar theek hai there's other stuff as well theek hai lekin ye formula clear hai is this formula clear uh so does the formula change no Nay, nee, this is for carbon that's fixed. Okay, sir. Because uh, remember, I told you to ignore the other isotopes of other elements, right? Like hydrogen's isotopes are very, very rare, so you don't really care about them. But there are other elements like chlorine and bromine, whose isotopes matter. And uh, so I'll, 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 I'll talk about them as well. Okay, but now the formula. Now, what do you want to do? Just use the formula. Uh, hmm. So where's, where's the questions? They gave us the M M plus one ratio. they gave us so what was the formula it was 100 over 1.1 into m plus 1 which is 0.9 over here and uh, divided by m which is 20.4 jo bhi answer aayega that's the number of carbon atoms so try and find the number of carbon atoms four sir so you're getting four carbon atoms okay So you're getting four carbon atoms for this. Or uh, hard question, forget the rest of the question. The rest is A2. Your is, I mean, in your case, this is about it. Agla question will go to be yoga ke M M plus one ratio is given. So how do you figure out the number of carbon atoms? It's 100 over 1.1 into 0.15. divided by 4.5 this one is 3 sir yeah, this one is 3 carbon atoms so theek hai ek to ye ho gaya ab phir dusra ke uh yeah phir se na ek aur main is pe class le lunga detail mein lekin hai choti si cheez that's the that's the only formula theek hai that's about it uh or uh, تو اگے ابھی اگے تھوڑی سی اور کہانی ہے میرے خاص اس کی نہ میں الگ سے ایک کلاس لے لوں گا ٹھیک ہے وہ کور ہو جائے گا اس میں 30 منٹس میں نا سارا کور ہو جائے گا یہی ہے دوسرے دو فارمولاز نا دے ار ایگزیکٹلی دی سیم ٹھیک ہے بٹ آئی ہیو ٹو سارٹ اف ایکسپلین آئی مین فورگیٹ دی ایکسپلینیشن ٹھیک ہے دس ایکسپلین دس انٹائر ایکسپلینیشن از ریلیونٹ ٹھیک ہے نو ون از گوئنگ ٹو آسک یو اینی تھنگ اباؤٹ دیٹ دی فارمولا از امپورٹنٹ دے ار جسٹ دے ار جسٹ گوئنگ ٹو آسک یو اباؤٹ دی فارمولا ٹھیک ہے تو ٹمارو آئی ول پرابلی ٹیک اٹ ناٹ ٹمارو I'll let you know, okay? I'll, I'll have a class on this, okay? Separately. 
and we can go through questions, A2 questions. You won't find questions in AS uh, apart from just one paper. Uh, so we'll probably go through a bunch of A2 papers and see how this formula works, TK. Okay, sir. Okay, then, take care. Uh, so, sir, last question. Are you having uh, a class tomorrow, sir? Uh, tomorrow evening, man. Evening. Uh, it's, uh, can you not hold that class before 4, sir, because I have school tomorrow? 8.45. Not, not this class. I won't have this class. Uh, so, I'll give you the Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir.